All right, hey VC, I'm Jamie, welcome back. And uh, we're back with Vinyl Tag 2020. So we've got uh, 20 questions plus to take a look at, so let's get right to it. Uh, best find of 2019. Now for me, maybe an unusual choice, but uh, Nash the Slash and Bedside Companion. This was a Nash the Slash, his, uh, as a solo artist, this was his first release. He was with the band FM. And this is before he did the sort of uh, bandage uh, look, sort of that Invisible Man look uh, that he was more known for. Uh, so that's without uh, the bandages. And this is actually an EP, but I just never thought I'd come across this in the wild. This has been uh, since reissued uh, with a different cover. But uh, yeah, for me, Nash the Slash, a Bedside Companion, I was absolutely thrilled to come across that one. Okay, uh, next one, favorite album of 2019. I'm going to go with uh, The Who and Who, and uh, I think this is a great album. Uh, even love the bonus tracks as well. I think I'm going to have to pick this one up on vinyl, but uh, The Who and uh, the album simply titled Who, although for me, though, a close second was Leonard Cohen's and Thanks for the Dance, which was also a great album. Okay, novelty record. Now, a uh, Canadian artist, uh, when you're first listening to this Canadian artist, if you're not familiar with him, you'd be thinking, what is this all about? We're talking about Stompin' Tom Connors, and uh, this is his, really his signature album, Bud the Spud. Uh, songs like Bud the Spud, the Ketchup Song, Sudbury Saturday Night, um, a very sort of country twang, and you're thinking, my goodness, what is going on here? But Stomp and Tom, quite loved uh, in Canada uh, in terms of writing about Canadian places and things and events, that sort of thing. Uh, there is quite a lot of humor uh, in his music for sure, but uh, maybe for novelty record, I'm going to go with Stomp and Tom Connors and Bud the Spud. There you go. Okay, uh, homage cover, a cover that plays a, pays homage to another, and I immediately thought of Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention were only in it for the money. Of course, the uh, very tongue-in-cheek <laughs> homage to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, especially with a cover like that. And this was initially on the inside. Uh, this is a reissue on mono that they uh, put the actual, what was intended to be the cover uh, on, on the front there. Okay. And so now we have a B-side, deep cut, uh, question number five. I went with uh, Elton John from uh, Captain Fantastic and the uh, Brown Dirt Cowboy. Uh, the A-side was Someone Saved My Life Tonight, which was the only single, I believe, released from that album. But then the B-side, uh, only found on the B-side, not found on the album, uh, the song House of Cards. And Elton John was great for that, for having a lot of B-sides that were only available on the 45s that weren't taken uh, from the albums or anything like that. They would show up later on uh, compilations or rare masters, uh, sort of thing. But Elton John was really, really great for that kind of thing. Question number six, something funky. How about Funkadelic and Free Your Mind? And you know the rest. Funky, Funkadelic, absolutely. Okay, Weird Shelf Buddies, records that sit next to each other that make a strange pair. Now, for me, uh, this was pretty uh, pretty easy or straightforward because my, my vinyl collection is not alphabetized. My CD collection is, but my vinyl collection is not alphabetized. Uh, I have, unfortunately, I've got vinyl sort of like in different spots in my house, something I'm gonna have to deal with uh, this year. But when I was flipping through uh, for this, I came across uh, David Gilmour, his first solo album, and uh, German uh, beer drinking songs. So there's a... Uh, an unusual pairing, German beer drinking music and uh, David Gilmore. That's, I would say that, that that would be an unusual pairing. Okay, uh, number eight, I was there, a band I've seen. Uh, Steve Hackett uh, was the last uh, big uh, concert that I've been to, uh, Steve Hackett, he's got a great band, uh, continuing to do sort of that Genesis revisited thing. Of course, this is a voyage of the acolyte, but uh, yeah, Steve Hackett, man, what a great show. Some of the uh, Danforth Music Hall uh, in Toronto, absolutely great, great show. Okay, number nine. I wish I had an OG, but I have a repress. I'd love to have an original copy of the Stooges. Uh, I'm really happy with this repress, though. This was a record store day, so this has the original album and also some alternative takes and whatnot, so a double album. But I'd love to have an original of the Stooges, maybe someday. Okay, uh, number 10, a discography that you own. A couple of choices, uh, but I went with uh, The Police. Now, I picked up the, uh, the big police... Uh, vinyl uh, reissue, but in fact, I now have all of these, uh, with the exception of this sort of a bonus uh, disc on, uh, in terms of the uh, the original uh, copies uh, as well, or at least early presses. So I've got both the reissue and early presses. And I also have all this stuff on CD as well. So uh, yeah, the police, uh, very enjoyable. Okay, 
Uh, so that is a discography you own. Uh, number eight, a unique center label. Uh, maybe not terribly unique, but you don't always see it all the time. This is a Genesis and a Nursery Crime. I was able to pick this up this year. Uh, this was on uh, the on, distributed from Buddha Records. Now, this is not a gatefold, unfortunately, but it does have an original uh, Charisma label. And I don't know what it is about this label that I just love the Charisma pink label. I do love the Mad Hatter one as well and some of the other configurations, but there's something about that label I just love. Okay. Pre-band, an album that features someone who went on to become famous. So I'm going to go with the Halifax Three. Who? The Halifax Three, early folk stuff, didn't stick around for too long, but you might recognize that guy. Uh, from Nova Scotia, that is Denny Doherty, who of course would go on to be with the Mamas and the Papas. So Denny Doherty, uh, first off with the Halifax Three, and then went on with the Mamas and the Papas. Okay, so there's that. Uh, music book or movie uh, that you would recommend. Now, I've talked about the uh, Roger Daltrey uh, autobiography, uh, which uh, gets a big thumbs up from me. I think it's absolutely uh, terrific. It's uh, Thanks a Lot, Mr. Kibble, Kibble White or something like that, the Roger Daltrey autobiography. But I'm, I just got this for Christmas, and uh, getting into this now, uh, face it, Deborah Harry, and I initially didn't know that she was uh, releasing an autobiography, but I've never seen one. Usually they have the, like, the paper sleeve on the outside, but this is all actually part of the cover there's no it's no like paper sleeve it looks like it but it's not uh, it's actually part of it and this ha is just full of uh, great artwork as well so i don't know you won't be able to see it too much but it's got great artwork in there as well so getting into that and really enjoying it okay underrated album i'm gonna go with another canadian band that you may or may not be familiar with uh, the grapes of wrath and this is Treehouse. This was nice kind of pop uh, from the late 80s when, you know, enough of the 80s music was 80s music. This was a real nice breath of fresh air. Uh, fairly sought after uh, in the vinyl community in terms of the uh, you know, Canadian. Um, uh, Old Lucky Man, Backward Town, Peace of Mind. If you're not familiar with that song, uh, you can check that out to Grapes of Wrath, the song Peace of Mind. But uh, from Canada's West Coast. Uh, Grapes of Wrath. Uh, one of the band members is now uh, with uh, the band Northern Pikes. So Grapes of Wrath. Very underrated album. Underrated group, too. Okay, and uh, Batting Average, an artist or band that makes consistently great albums. I'm going to go with another Canadian band, Blue Rodeo. This is their first album, Outskirts. I've seen Blue Rodeo a number of times. They have performed a number of times in Stratford at the Stratford Festival. They have at least 15 studio albums, number of live albums, still going strong. They haven't released an album in a few years. They've been doing some solo stuff between Jim Cuddy and Ray Keeler. But nice... Uh, Country rock, country folk rock, and uh, gosh, this came out in 1986, 87, and uh, consistently great music, Blue Rodeo. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, check them out, for sure. Okay, and moving right along, same album, different cover. Uh, I don't own these on vinyl, but I immediately thought of uh, The Who, uh, The Who Sings My Generation, or of course, The Who Sings My Generation. Of course, the... Uh, Pretty much the same track listing. One or two tracks, I think, differ, but uh, in terms of the same title, but uh, completely uh, different covers. Okay, there you go. Uh, next one. Uh, an album bought cheap that is now worth money. Now, that's the one I really struggled with because I don't know really in my collection in terms of vinyl if I have anything that's necessarily worth that much more money. But when that question came up, I, I did think of this. Now, it's a box set. It's a CD box set. It's King of the box sets. <laughs> um... I immediately thought of this one. This is a Sky Dog, the Dwayne Allman retrospective, a great retrospective, but initially released like this, a lovely package with nice velvety interior, nice ribbons here. And this is the, uh, the uh, what went on the back there with the uh, hype sticker. Really nice booklet. I won't go too, too deep into this. Like, I won't show you the booklet or anything, but it's got just nice little touches, nice little, you know, uh, uh, sticker there. And each CD in sort of a replica uh, guitar string uh, thing, also with a pick uh, as well. Just a lovely, and it wasn't too expensive when it first came out. And then, um, I'm not sure if, like, this was on Concord. Uh, it was a Concord release, and then it was... 
this was deleted and then quickly reissued on, again, uh, cutting out a lot of this stuff, all the music, but then it was on the, the typical uh, fold-out uh, cardboard sleeves with the, all the discs stuck in with just cardboard sleeves and whatnot. And uh, I haven't seen it since. And in terms of uh, just going on things like Amazon, I don't even want to tell you what it costs to get this now. And that's for the cardboard sleeve reissue. And... Uh, I've, I haven't seen this uh, since, but this is just a lovely package that has since, uh, I think, gone up in price. My grandfather clock there. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting almost to the end here. Uh, favorite drummer. Uh, I have talked about uh, in a previous uh, video, it was one of the uh, contest entry videos. I went with Ginger Baker. This time I'm going to go with Bill Bruford. Uh, Bill Bruford with Yes, with King Crimson, this album. Oh, my goodness. Bill Bruford, an amazing drummer who just... He's got such a, a style to him, and it's just effortless. Like, you know, other drummers that are really pounding away, whereas Bill Bruford is just, you know, it's, it's, it's just effortlessly the way he does his drumming. Okay, Turning 20, an album that is turning 20 this year. It's got to be Britney Spears and Oops, I Did It Again, uh, featuring the title track, Oops, I Did It Again. And don't forget their cover, or her cover, of I Can't Get No Satisfaction. 20 years old, Britney Spears, this album, Oops, I Did It Again. Uh, a trilogy of albums, three solid albums, uh, back to back by the same artist. I went with actually four albums. When that question, I, I thought of this in terms of my, the Miles Davis Quintet and these albums on Prestige. And what's absolutely fascinating is that these were basically contractual obligation albums, if you will, because uh, Miles Davis was switching over to Columbia. But what a great set of albums that, uh, you know, they churn this stuff out. I don't know how he does it, but when you got a band like Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Red Garland, Paul Chambers, and uh, Philly Joe Jones, and then these great albums, Cooking, Relaxing, Working, and Streaming, that all have that kind of theme with the same uh, quintet, but the way they were able to kind of bang out these albums, but in, in just in terms of the musicianship, that's something I would really like to pick up on vinyl for sure. Okay, so I think that's all the questions. Uh, the VC shout-outs, I'm going to shout-out to uh, Joel at uh, Planet13. Joel, thanks for all your support and great channel. You deserve more subscribers. Uh, Chris, Blues Guy Vinyl, who's uh, going strong, uh, becoming the Blues Authority uh, now on the VC. Uh, congratulations on that, Chris. And certainly a, uh, a channel that deserves more subscribers is Daryl with Off the Beaten Tracks. I love Daryl's sense of humor. He is also showing some of the most... Um, off the off the beaten track albums uh, i don't know where he's finding some of these uh, vinyl records uh, between thrift stores and whatnot and uh, he's just got a great sense of humor and i understand that daryl uh who's now uh, back in toronto uh, used to be a writer on johnny carson's tonight show that's right so he was he was the head comedy writer so his great sense of humor got to check out his channel off the beaten tracks okay that's it vinyl tag 2020 thanks so much and uh, tag you're it